Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to another episode of Quite Serious Impressions, where I play the first few hours of a game, then decide whether or not it's worth my time. And today we'll be looking at Rabi Ribi, a peculiar game developed by Cree Spirit and Gemma Yue and published by Sekai Project. I say peculiar not just because the game is a hybrid of three different genres that have nothing in common, but also because of my feelings towards it. Never have I played a game that made me love it so much, yet at the same time hate it so much as Rabi Ribi did. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For the longest time I've been seeing this game recommended to me on Steam's front page, but I was never interested. It just didn't look like something I'd enjoy. Later on though, I found out that a friend of mine, one that I trust a lot, has played the game for about 29 hours. When I asked him about it, all he said was, play it yourself. So, I did. So is the game really that good? Does it handle all three genres well, or will it stumble and fall for trying out too many things at the same time? And will I be able to get over its interesting visuals and actually enjoy the game? To answer these questions and more, allow me to summarize my first impressions. You play as Erina, a rabbit that wakes up inside a box only to realize that she has been transformed into a swimsuit wearing human with bunny ears and a bunny tail. Because of course she did. Wondering where her master Rumi is, she sets out to Rabi Rabi town to look for her. Rabi Rabi is a town exclusively inhabited by chibi girls of all kinds. Because of course it is. The name apparently comes from the town's love for rabbits, not because it was built by two chibi rabbis as I initially thought. On your way to Rabi Rabi, you meet a half-naked fairy named Ribbon, because of course you do. After a slight and incredibly unnecessary misunderstanding resulting in a boss fight, she agrees to help you find Rumi. The NPCs you initially meet keep thinking that you're a member of this weird organization of girls who wear rabbit ears and are obsessed with rabbits. And this is where the game lost me. The story is truly bizarre and not in a good way. I would have endured the story a lot more if the dialogue wasn't this awful though. I lost count of the number of times I screamed GET OVER THERE! I hate it when characters take 10 minutes to say something that could have been said in like 30 seconds. Take this scene for example. This conversation was 21 text screens long yet it could have easily been reduced to 4. The entire game is full of unnecessary exposition, cringeworthy jokes and cheesy dialogue that adds nothing to the game's plot. The characters are even worse. None of them are relatable or well written and most of them are downright annoying. Just cantily clad girls with one personality trait to define them. Look there's the shy girl. Oh hey there's the apathetic girl. Oh and this one's the poor girl. They made the lack of money. A personality trait. Ugh. I have no issues with story heavy games. I don't mind going through walls of text when it actually contributes to the main plot and is actually interesting, but when it's just dumb anime girls doing dumb anime crap, it just gets on my nerves. The visuals aren't any better, and I'm not saying that because of the anime look. It might not be my cup of tea, but I can understand why a lot of people love it. But the game looks so bland. Nothing about the visuals seems interesting or unique. I can't deny that the chibi characters are adorable and well made, but they also come with their own flaws. For starters, the animation isn't that great, especially Erina's walking animation. Just looks weird and choppy. Second, all characters look very similar. The number of times I got hit by one of those bunny-eared enemies just because I didn't notice the bunny ears. Even other types of enemies blend with their surroundings making it difficult to notice them. The colors are so washed out, making it difficult for enemies to pop or stand out. Speaking of surroundings, most levels in this game are bland and boring, and some of them are downright ugly. I also hated the character illustrations used during cutscenes. They are nowhere near as cute or well made as their in-game chibi counterparts. No style, no personality. Just generic half-nude anime girls that aren't even that well drawn. The music is a mixed bag. Some tracks are passable.
others are... Either way, it's nothing to write home about. The good tracks are still forgettable and the bad ones aren't bad enough to complain about. Before we move on, I want to ask you something. Can you name a restaurant that has horrible service, takes a long time to prepare your food and the tables are always dirty, but you keep going there because the food is just that good? Well, that's how I feel about Rabi Ribi. The gameplay is just that good. Let's start with the basics. Movement in this game starts off really weak. Your jump is kinda low and you can't double jump or do any other cool moves. Little by little, you find upgrades that allow you to double jump, slide, and wall jump, making movement a lot more fast-paced and fun. Then you've got your Pico Hammer, a melee weapon with a simple 3-hit combo. At first, it's nothing special, but later on you get a 4th and 5th hit added to your combo, you get this awesome hammer somersault move, an upward attack, a downwards attack, a slide attack, and an air dash attack. And if that wasn't enough, Ribbon shoots magic bullets, acting as your ranged weapon. You can either fire normal shots or charge them up to unleash a stronger version of the bullet. Later on, you get the ability to fill up a boost meter that unleashes a powerful attack that does a lot of damage and usually covers a large area. You start off with standard bullets but then end up with so many different types, each with their own charged up attack and boost attack. And this is the first thing I love about Metroidvanias. How you start off weak and slow but gradually gain more moves, more weapons and more upgrades so that by the end of the game you are practically playing a different game altogether. Most of Erina's moves cost SP while Ribbon's charged up and boost attacks cost MP. Both SP and MP regenerate over time, adding an extra level of complexity to the combat. For example, if your SP is fully depleted, you won't be able to attack until it regenerates, so you'd need to watch out for that. You'll find different colored potions that upgrade your stats, such as red ones that increase your max health, blue ones that increase your max SP and MP, green ones that decrease regen time, and purple ones that increase your attack. Why is the bottle missing its neck? There are also these yellow potions that increase your pack points, which brings me to badges. You find these badges that give you passive abilities when you equip them, such as increasing your invincibility frames, increasing your HP, or giving you one final chance if you lose all your health. Each badge has a number attached to it that indicates how many pack points it requires, and since you have a set pack point number, you can only equip so many badges at a time. And yes, I am intentionally avoiding calling them PP. There is also this amulet that stuns enemies while inflicting slight damage on them and giving you a short period of invincibility. Then there is the carrot bomb that can be used to damage enemies and to open up secret areas. There are so many secrets in this game and most of them are just laying in plain sight, taunting you to find a way to get to them. I love this so much. Secrets, in my opinion, are the best incentive to get people to explore your game, and it seems the devs of Rabi Ribi agree with me. And I need to mention how awesome the level design is. Just one look at the maps gives you an idea of how complex the layout can be. The way they connect with each other, how you open up shortcuts between them, how you keep discovering new areas by chance. And this is the second thing I love about Metroidvanias. You don't just gradually discover more of the map just for the heck of it, but rather you're surprised with something new every turn you make. I also love how when you get a new quest, it's shown on your map, even if you didn't discover that area yet. Seeing that colored box on your map without fully knowing how to get to it just makes me excited to go there. Because I don't know if the route I'm taking is the right one or not, I might discover new stuff. There are also these transport stones in every area that allow you to transport to any other previously discovered stone, which comes in very handy later on when you need to go back to Rabi Rabi Town and buy health refilling donuts and cakes from Miriam, the shopkeeper. Miriam also sells upgrade potions and level ups to some of your moves and items. Every move and item in this game can be leveled up to rank 3. Some of said level ups can be bought from the shop, whilst others occur while you're using the item. 
Other than Miriam's shop, you can also find all characters you've recruited so far in Rabi Rabi Town, and sometimes they provide you with temporary buffs. Speaking of which, there are also a lot of enemies that inflict debuffs and ailments, adding an RPG element to the game. This is one of the main reasons why I love this game. It takes elements from both sides of the Metroidvania spectrum. The upgrades and extra moves are elements from the Metroid side, while the buffs, debuffs and leveling up are from the Castlevania side. And the bullet hell aspect of the game is brilliant. Most enemies shoot magic bullets at you and you usually get different enemies throwing different patterns at you, making dodging them all the more challenging, especially during boss fights. Speaking of which, I adore boss fights in this game. How they start off simple with one pattern at a time, then they start throwing two or more patterns at you at once. And every boss has a rage mode, during which they relentlessly throw everything at you, giving you little chance to attack them or refill your health. And thank goodness, most boss fights usually occur in flat, simple colored areas which allow the bullets to stand out. If that wasn't the case, boss fights wouldn't have been nearly as fun or as fair as they are now and would have been more of a chore. And this game is difficult enough. I've been playing it on normal difficulty and I still got my ass handed to me many, 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 many times. But I didn't mind it. Every time I die, I just jump right back in because with every death, you learn something new. There is so much to do in this game. Other than the story mode, there is also a boss rush mode and a speedrun mode. I've also heard that there is a new game plus feature, and to me, that's always welcomed. I have praised the gameplay so much, but there are a few flaws that I need to talk about. For starters, I don't like how limited your health items are. I understand wanting to limit them in order to make the game more challenging, but don't you think two donuts and two cakes at a time is a bit too limited? Second, Erina's hitbox is significantly smaller than her sprite and doesn't cover it entirely. Which makes sense since sprites in this game are way too big and having every pixel affected by hits would probably make the game way too difficult. It doesn't pose a huge problem once you get used to it and it doesn't affect maneuvering such as wall jumping or sliding. But I don't get why they wouldn't make it a lot simpler by just making the sprites smaller. This is where my impressions video was supposed to end. But while checking out the game's achievements, I discovered something new about the game. Something that made me love and respect it a lot more than I initially did. Because this game is non-linear. When I saw this achievement, I could not believe it. In my playthrough, Lilith was a character that I met after so many other characters, 7 hours into the game. Yet, you get an achievement for meeting her before anyone else? That's not all. You can beat the game without picking up your hammer. You can meet Ribbon before meeting Coco, which I didn't think was possible seeing how Coco is supposed to be your first boss fight. You can get the air dash move before fighting Kotri, another thing I didn't think was possible. Heck, I even watched some speedrunners that were able to beat the game without picking the hammer, without recruiting Ribbon, and without laying a single hit on any enemy, including bosses. I already thought the level design is great enough, but apparently it's even more complex than I thought. It's truly ingenious. If the visuals and story weren't so awful, this game would have been one of my all-time favorites, and possibly the best Metroidvania I've ever played in my life. Even with the awful visuals and story, I'd highly recommend this game. The gameplay alone is well worth the asking price. If you're a fan of 2D platformers, or Metroidvanias, or bullet hell games, or anime schlock, or just interested in experiencing some superb level design, you owe it to yourself to play this game. Rabi Ribi is available for $17.99 on Steam, and is also available with all DLCs included for $24.99 on PS Vita and $29.99 on PS4. You can also get the game on the Xbox. Wait. Uh, my bad, it, it's just on PC, PS4, and PS Vita. Well... Um... So... I heard it's also coming for the Nintendo Switch, so that's something. Well, this is awkward.
Hmm. Okay, bye.